So now the department, the Community Relations Service becomes a part of the Department of Justice and uh, Ramsey Clark is the Attorney General and then the Detroit riot breaks out. Not to say there are no other little mini riots b between these two and what's that like? That was one of the most extraordinary experiences of my life because Detroit was a city I had known. Mm. It was close to Ann Arbor. My, lots of my buddies had grown up there and uh, I had done some courting there. Um, all of a sudden, this, there's real firefights. Um, you could drive around the city and you can hear guns. Mm -hmm. um, there was a complete curfew. It was eerie. It was, it was like being in a war. And uh, my job was at night to go out and see. We didn't believe all the reports that were coming mm -hmm. in. Governor Romney was really useless. Mm -hmm. um, um, and my job was to go out at night and to see how much violence there actually was because we had the army there. Mm -hmm. And the question was how we wanted to get the army, the president wanted to get the army out of there quickly because he didn't want his army to kill any people. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'd go out at night and uh, uh, I was in places where there were shootings and uh, I was in a place where there was an awful uh, police incident. And part of the problem was that you saw that the National Guard was kids. And they were kids from out of state. It's the first time they'd ever mm. been to Detroit. They are scared to death, but they got loaded guns. Right. Well, I'm telling you, that was dangerous. And um, one night, uh, we were, uh, my assistant and I, and he was a, another black guy, because uh, the white guys just couldn't go out at night. That's, mm. uh, uh, my assistant and I were out someplace, and uh, we got to the corner of Grand River and Joy Road. I'll never forget this. And all of a sudden, a convoy just surrounds us. There were state police, there were National Guardsmen, there were local police, there were sheriffs and everything. And I had fancy credentials as a federal official, and they were here in my inside mm -hmm. coat pocket. Out of the car, they scream, out of the car, out of the car. And you emerge from a car, and you're two black guys, and you're surrounded by like 20 or 30 white men with guns, all mm -hmm. of them pointing them guns at you. And they're all scared, too. Mm -hmm. And so I just say, scream Justice Department at the top of your lungs. And we scream, Justice Department, Justice Department, Justice Department. And they're screaming at us, mm -hmm. you know. And I really, at that point, I think I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. And I was 35 years old, same age as my father when he died. And my father's last words were 35 and through. And I said, 35 and through, mm. at the corner of Grand River and Joy Road. I wasn't afraid. I just said, damn. You know, mm. I was disappointed, really. Um, but I kept on screaming. And I couldn't, you know, no mm. way I'm going to yeah. pull out the, my identification. Finally, one guy heard. And he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. And he obviously was an officer. And he walked over and he opened my jacket and he took it out. He said, okay, okay, put the guns down. And, uh, but that was close. And um, what, the other thing that uh, struck me about Detroit, well, the, there was black militants. I really saw for the first time the real, there was theoretical, working, intellectual work on blackness, black separation, mm -hmm. black power, black, but it was more than just the slogan. It was yeah. really serious work on the conception of blackness and a separate uh, identity and the power uh, and the humanity of blackness. And that I saw for the first time very clearly in Detroit. And the other thing I saw was every night we, uh, we who were sent out by the president would eat together. Mm -hmm. We're all doing other stuff all over the yeah. place. And we'd come together, and you couldn't get a drink in the town. The town was dry, but the mayor, Jerry Kavanaugh, sent a whole bunch of booze. So we'd go up to Cyrus Vance's office, have a drink, mm -hmm. I mean his room, and then go down and have uh, 
dinner. But one of the people we wanted to see was Walker Sisler. He was the mover and shaker of the city, the head of Consolidated Edison or Detroit Edison. And John Doerr, the head of the civil rights, legendary head of the civil rights division, and I had been up interviewing people who had been arrested. Mm -hmm. Who are these people? We've been in the prison. We came back, and I was downstairs filling out some reports. John called me and he said, Roger, um, we've located Walker Sisler, and he's invited us to dinner at the Detroit Yacht Club. Mm -hmm. I just thought you'd want to know that. I said, what? We're going to the Detroit Yacht Club to dinner. I couldn't believe it. Detroit Yacht Club was a segregated mm -hmm. institution. Now, we were not there. We're, we're there because black people are rioting. Mm -hmm. And the former Deputy Attorney General of the United States, I mean, the, the former Deputy Secretary of Defense of the United States, a future Secretary of State, the then Deputy Attorney General, a future uh, Secretary of State, the legendary white civil rights hero, mm -hmm. and a flag from the Defense Department, are all going off to, to this segregated, segregated joint club. and going to leave me, which mm -hmm. they did. Mm -hmm. it, it was quite a lesson about our country. And Cy Vance never, ever, ever s explained it to me, said, I'm sorry. All the little minions came and said, kind of tried mm. to make me think it never happened. Mr. Vance would never do that. Da, 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 da. Mm. You know, the guy was not man enough to come to me and say, Roger, I am really sorry mm. that this had to happen, but this, it was really important for us yeah, to see we had this to guy. Do yeah. 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 Nothing. Mm. 